Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today at the home of the, ex of the Prime Minister at Sheffield. We are discussing immigration and the way people feel they need to vote for a BNP. With me is Lord Hypocrite from the House of Lords. Good afternoon. From, I'm Professor Illegal from Oxford University. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. <laughs> well done, done. Two, three. And finally, Dr. Emmy Grant, who is a psychologist from Harley Street. Hello, how are you doing? Oh, yeah. I want to start as the obvious chair of this vital meeting. Uh, take a look at this wonderful map. Doesn't it make you feel proud to be British, knowing that we ruled North America, we had colonies in South America, half of Africa belonged to us, we governed India and the Middle East, Australasia, parts of East, East Asia, and many other little colonies around the world, and do we still rule the Falkland Islands? Okay. Oh God, what do you mean man? Do you mean Britain on the world? Well, yes, we did rule the world. Uh, all these foreigners used to quake in their feet at the mention of the word the British Empire, the Russians, the Americans, the Germans, the French. They were all terrified of us. Unfortunately, not anymore. <laughs> Why do you want to keep harking to the past all the time? Why do you want to look to the future? The past is the past. Look to the future, man. Oh, well, there's not much of a future left for us nostalgic Brits. I can remember when we ruled the Americans for 200 years. You should tell yes. me, what about the 30 million slaves that were sent out there in the new world to build the new world? Build the, to build the new world. Build the infrastructure. Who, who can build the railways, the government, the, the administration, the civic engineering? It was the British did all this for, for the rest of the world. Yeah, man. Can you begin to imagine the way the whole African tribes were massacred, tortured, raped, looted? It makes Hitler's work look soft. We are talking about 300 years of European slavery of millions of African-like animals. The third rape lasted only for 13 years, man. Do you get what I'm saying? As a Polish Pakistani, I would like to add that millions of Asians were too enslaved, yeah? Enslaved like animals, yeah? Tortured, raped, looted! But well, you don't hear about that, do you? One's perfect. We were in competition with a whole load of other Europeans. I would like to remind uh, Professor Hypocrite that um, it was Lord, Lord Hypocrite, if right. you don't I, mind. I beg your pardon. <laughs> During the time of the Roman invasion, yeah, the Brits used to live in mud huts, yeah, in tribes. It was the Romans that came here that made people here civilised. You had uh, the Romans designed the um, drainage, the roads, the infrastructure, the legal system, the court system. Uh, the toilets. I think you're talking crap. It was Thomas Crapper that invented the toilet. Gives us what to do. <laughs> okay. Are you telling me that enslaving your fellow human being for a hundred years in the name of God is that civilized? Well, it was God's will. He tells us what to do. Oh, still... <laughs> Well, it was God's will. He has the ultimate power and tells us what to do. But it's written in the Bible. Well, it doesn't mean to say that humans don't have free will. They can choose what their actions are going to be if they have the will to do it. Carry on. Okay. Now it is. The tables are turned now, Lord Oakwright. Uh, you look at India and China. In the next 50 years, they will be the economic power bases. You wait and see. Everybody will be going over there rather than coming over here. Uh, okay. Yes, we should never have given you Indians independence. That way we'd still be making money out of you through taxes and other things. Well, Lord O'Crit, uh, I would like to remind you that um, you had no choice because, uh, in the words of the Boston Tea Party, Gandhi was brewing a very strong Indian tea. You had to give independence. 
No, that was a Boston Strangler, wasn't it? <laughs> Let's be here because we've had it. Yeah, but you regret having independence now and you've lost so much that we gave to you. We gave you so many things. We gave you Shakespeare, Churchill, Margaret Thatcher. Science, technology, agriculture. We taught you how to drink tea properly. <laughs> <laughs> we brought you archaeology, dinosaurs. We gave you schools and we even gave you cricket to play. And we gave you the greatest gift possible to give anybody in the whole world the use of the English language. Okay. Oh my God, what about pedophile, financial fraud, and pornography? Do you mean that's civilized? I think you'll find that was us. Uh, the Kama Sutra uh, was written in uh, ancient India and that uh, taught people how to make love in 69 positions. Okay. That probably explains why you have so many babies that you can't even feed them properly. Look at all these athletes. They're all black. We are well endowed. That's why all these white women love us. Well, there's not that much difference in penis size generally. It's just that some women like a bit of rough. I'm going to do it now. Wait till I get you. Cool. Okay. What do you mean, men? We are the loving kings. Don't you know that? Well, South Asian men tend to have smaller penises than average. Okay. Penises than average. Okay. No, no. no. North Indian man of Pakistani Polish origin. I would like to remind you guys <laughs> that uh, North Indian men do have above average penis size. And if you want, I'm quite willing to prove it. Oh, I'll take your word for it. But what have you given to the world apart from the Kama Sutra? <laughs> well, medicines, herbs, spices, good food, rockets, yoga. I don't be ridiculous. I think you'll find Yogi Bear came from Hollywood. Then you know. Okay. Then you know. Okay. Don't you know that curry is the British national dish? Double warming in. So you have to do it again, Jim. Do it again. So just do it. Just look at the map of the world. We ruled most of that. Now they all want to come here as a consequence. We're sinking under the weight of all these people coming into the country. It's nothing to do with global warming. Forward, move forward, that lamp's in danger again. <laughs> yeah. Do you know when the biggest mass migration of people took place? Of course it was in the 50s and 60s when all you lot decided to come here. You know perfectly well, Lord O'Crit, or whatever your name is, right? Mm. The biggest mass migration... Oh, Biggest mass migration, I'm being serious here now, look at me seriously. Biggest mass migration took place in the 19th century when over 20 million English, Scottish, Welsh, Irish, French, German, Spanish, Portuguese, Russians went over to the New World, North America, South America, Australasia, Southern Africa, Siberia, etc, etc. And... <coughs> coffee now it's too emotional they were the original economic refugees let's think about this they went from Europe in search of a better place and a better way to live that makes them economic refugees they were the e original economic refugees let's not forget that and now when millions of people want to come over to Europe in place of a in better life can you blame them is everything works in a circle. Everything is cyclical. What goes round comes round. You can't blame these people. They're all innocent economic refugees. Poor bastards. Yes, but we'd be back in the good old days. No crime, no housing shortages. Yeah, but seriously, Lord O'Crypt, why is it okay for me? Oh, you call me hip. Sorry, hip. <laughs> oh, right, we're getting, <laughs> we're getting familiar. Why is it okay for we'll get familiar later? <laughs> That's what you think. Why is it okay for millions of uh, Brits and Europeans to go abroad and live in other countries and basically take over other countries in some respects, and not okay for other people to come to Europe and live here and treat this country as their home and their property? Well, <laughs>